What is going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Richardson. I'm a personal trainer. I'm also a chemical engineer. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about the five worst foods that men eat trying to boost their testosterone levels. If you're new here, I want you to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to teach you how to eat and how to train to optimize your testosterone levels naturally. So if you're interested, go ahead and subscribe and turn the notification bells on too so that you don't miss out on any of my latest content. Now you're going to want to make sure that you stick around for the whole video because when you know what all five of these foods are and you do your best to minimize how often you consume them, you're going to get the best results. So let's go ahead and dive in. Food number one is broccoli. Now this probably surprises people because broccoli is kind of notorious for being a healthy low calorie food. But the reality is that the stem portion of a plant and cruciferous vegetables in general are pretty difficult to digest. And because they're difficult to digest, that puts a lot of stress on your digestive system. And the way that you kind of want to envision your overall bodily health is that you want to reduce the amount of stress on all of the systems in your body. So that includes your digestive system, that includes your respiratory system, your neuromuscular system, your reproductive system, your endocrine system, even your skeletal system. There are several systems in your body but they all work together for the purpose of achieving optimal health and that's how you want to think of things. So it may seem kind of crazy that improving your digestion and doing everything that you can to reduce the amount of stress on your digestive system will actually ultimately increase or optimize your testosterone levels. That is in fact the case because your body works as one unit. So you don't wanna put more stress on your digestive system than you have to. And furthermore, broccoli and cruciferous vegetables are rich in compounds called goitrogens. And goitrogens are very effective at inhibiting your thyroid activity. And thyroid activity is the chief regulator of your body's metabolic rate. And you want it operating on full throttle. So you don't want to be consuming anything that is going to inhibit activity. You want your thyroid operating optimally because that's ultimately going to let your body use food more efficiently and it's going to use energy more efficiently to do things and that's really going to help maximize the amount of testosterone production that takes place in your body. So do your best to minimize the amount of broccoli that you consume. Food number two is nuts. So if you haven't seen my video on polyunsaturated fats, go ahead and check that out right here after you're done watching this one. In that video, I go into a little more detail on why polyunsaturated fats are so unhealthy, but that's essentially the reason why nuts in general are things that you want to stay away from. Nuts are higher in polyunsaturated fats than they are monounsaturated fats and saturated fats. And the thing about polyunsaturated fats in a nutshell, no pun intended, is that polyunsaturated fats are very unstable in the presence of heat and oxygen. And both of those are very prevalent within your body. So polyunsaturated fats will readily break down into compounds called free radicals. And free radicals are extremely reactive, highly unstable, and they will pretty much react with anything in your body to reach a more stable state. And that's not a good thing. There are a few nuts that are acceptable. In one of my videos, I talked about the benefits of Brazil nuts and Brazil nuts are actually technically seeds. And macadamia nuts are also great too because macadamia nuts are high in monounsaturated fats. But things like almonds and cashews and pistachios and even peanuts, which even peanuts are technically legumes, we usually categorize them as nuts. But things like that, you wanna stay away from them. And that includes pretty much any kind of oil that's derived from nuts as well. Pretty much any kind of nut oil is gonna be very high in polyunsaturated fats and you wanna stay clear of those. Food number three is soy. 
Now, soy is massively produced on a very large scale, and there's so many industrial food manufacturing processes that take place when soy is produced that it's just become a very low quality crop in general. Probably 95% of soy contains some kind of genetically modified organism in order for it to be made. And furthermore, pretty much all soy fields are used again and again and again, usually historically good agricultural practice is to rotate out different crops throughout the seasons but agricultural engineers have come up with ways so that you can keep using the same product or crop over and over and over again and that's actually really destructive for the quality of the soil soy is also high in compounds called phytoestrogens and pretty much all phytoestrogens are compounds that favor the production of more estrogen in the body and we don't want that because estrogen is anti-testosterone your body definitely still needs a healthy level of estrogen and that's kind of how you want to think about hormones in general all different hormones need to be in a proper balance for you to actually be healthy and feel healthy including testosterone but minimizing the amount of phytoestrogens that you consume is a good way to keep testosterone levels nice and high and healthy food number four is corn so it's kind of the same idea corn is with soy is that it's just such a massively manufactured food at this point pretty much like 95 percent of corn is made using some kind of herbicide or insecticide pesticide fungicide they use all kinds of those sprays on things like that there really isn't inherently anything wrong with corn in and of itself it's just that how it is produced these days essentially just makes it toxic to the body. They use so many different synthetic chemicals on corn. Lots of nasty sprays are used during the production process of corn to keep pests away. And the more toxins that we introduce into our bodies, the harder our endocrine systems have to work in order to flush those toxins out when all of that energy that your endocrine system is using to flush out toxins, it could be used towards doing things like producing more testosterone or optimizing testosterone synthesis. And that's exactly what we want to do. So try your best to minimize the amount of corn that you consume. Nowadays, it's very hard to completely get away from some of these products. So things like soy and corn, they're used in a lot of restaurants and stuff or pretty much anything that comes in a bag. There's probably some amount of soy or corn in it. But again, that's just because we use products like these in almost everything that we eat and everything that we make. However, that doesn't make it a healthy food to eat. So try to limit the amount of corn that you consume in your diet. And then food number five, the most unfortunate of all of them is beer. Beer is most often made from wheat. And again, this comes back to the whole agricultural practices of making products like this. Beer is very highly processed. Just the production process of making beer in and of itself is very industrialized, if you will. And also kind of the derivatives of beer, which is wheat, that in and of itself is coming in and it's a low quality product using a low quality industrial process to make an end product of beer. Now there is kind of something to be said about alcohol and alcohol's testosterone lowering effects on the body. We won't get too much into that, but there's definitely something to be said about it. There's nothing wrong with having a drink here and there. But in general, overconsumption of alcohol is definitely directly related to lowering testosterone. And it's kind of ironic how beer is thought of as this manly masculine drink and that like real men drink beer kind of thing. But it has such an opposite effect on the body on a physiological level. It's just kind of ironic, honestly. It kind of just makes me naturally wonder why society operates this way. So with the combination of these three things, the product that beer is derived from, the manufacturing processes that are used to make beer, and also just beer having alcohol, which kind of inherently can lower testosterone if you drink too much of it, these things make beer another food that you definitely want to limit how often you consume them. 
So there you have it. Those are my five foods that you definitely want to avoid if you want to keep testosterone levels nice and high and healthy. I will end the video by saying this. You don't need to just completely stay away from all of these foods and avoid them like the plague. There has to be some kind of trade-off to you just living your life and enjoying your life. And if that's going to involve you eating foods that might have a little bit of corn or soy in them or drinking a beer here and there with your buddies, I think the psychological payoff of you just not worrying about it, it's definitely not worth you avoiding these foods like they're the freaking plague. I mean, I don't really understand why you would ever run into a situation where broccoli is going to be this super enjoyable thing. But anyway, that's just my opinion. I don't really like broccoli. If you just do your best to limit how often you consume these foods, you'll be feeling a lot better and your testosterone levels will stay nice and high and healthy. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're new here, I want you to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to teach you how to eat and how to train to boost your testosterone levels so that you can experience what life is like with nice and high, thriving, healthy testosterone levels. So go ahead and subscribe because I do post at least every single week. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks a lot for watching and sticking around. I really appreciate you. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below. Let me know if there are other foods that you can think of that are horrible for testosterone. I always love hearing from you guys, so definitely let me know. Thanks again for watching everyone. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.